Okay, let's look at an example of how we might prepare a cost of quality report. And uh, it says Clayson Corporation manufactures radion shielding glass panels. Suppose Clayson is considering spending the following amounts on a new total quality management program. Strength testing is one one item from each batch of panels would cost 62000 Training employees in TQM or total quality management, 23000 Training suppliers in TQM, 34000 Identifying preferred suppliers that commit to on-time delivery of perfect quality materials, 51000 And then Clayson expects the new program to save costs through the following. Avoid lost profits from lost sales due to disappointed customers, 85000 Avoid rework and spoilage, 66000 Avoid inspection of raw materials, 49000 And avoid warranty costs, 25000 So these are all of the costs incurred, and these are going to be the savings that they see from implementing the program. So it asks us to classify each item as a prevention cost, an appraisal cost, internal failure cost, or an external failure cost. And then should Clayson implement the new quality program and then support your reason. So I think it's going to be advantageous to go back and review the four um, types of quality costs that we would find on a cost quality report. So I, I actually have them backwards here. So let's look at the cost of good quality. We will have appraisal costs and prevention costs. So um, just as a refresher, the prevention costs here are going to be costs Help, that help to avoid poor quality goods or services. So examples would include employee training, improved materials, and prevention maintenance. Second type of quality costs are going to be appraisal costs. So these are costs incurred to detect poor quality or services. Examples of appraisal costs are the cost of inspection through production, inspection of final products, and product testing. Then we've got the cost of poor quality here. These are our internal failure and our external failure costs. So the internal failure costs are the costs to help avoid delivery of poor quality goods or services to customers I, I, so before they actually get to the customer here as you see before delivery to customers. So an example of an internal failure cost is the cost incurred to rework the product to eliminate the defect before it is allowed to leave the plant. Then we have external failure costs. These are costs that can happen when the company has to incur cost after the defective product has been delivered to the customer. This is typically the most detrimental cost to a company as it costs low customer satisfaction rating and damages a company's reputation. So examples would be lost profits, warranty costs, service costs, sales returns due to quality problems. So let's go back up to our problem and let's break these into as it asks for what exactly are our prevention, appraisal, internal failure costs, and external failure costs. So prevention costs, again, to help us avoid poor quality goods or services will be, looks like, what will strength training testing one item from each batch of panels do? Strength training one item. And if we go ahead and do that, it should be a prevention. Let's go down. Training of employees in TQM. Again, is prevention. We're um, trying to avoid poor quality. So we will write that one as prevention. Oh my, I'm so sorry. I wrote prevention here and that is not what I was thinking. So what would strength testing one item from each batch of panels be? Strength testing. So these are costs incurred to detect poor quality goods or services. So this is actually an appraisal cost, not a prevention cost. My apologies for the confusion. So we have prevention. This would be training to help avoid poor quality goods or services. Same then for training our suppliers. And identifying preferred suppliers that commit to on-time delivery of perfect quality materials. That will also be a prevention. Help us prevent them from happening in the first place. 
Let's continue downward. Um, avoid lost profits from lost sales due to disappointed customers. So if we want to go ahead and avoid products or um, profits, I'm sorry, from lost sales, losing profits from disappointed customers, I think that the most appropriate thing there would be the external failure cost because this would be after the fact we would have dissatisfied customers and then avoid rework and spoilage avoid rework and spoilage would be an internal failure avoid inspection of raw materials will be an appraisal cost and then avoid warranty costs. Uh, that is again going to be something that happens after the fact with customers after they get the product so that will be an external failure. So it looks like we've got three prevention costs, two appraisal costs, one internal failure and two external failures. So if we can put that in a nice fancy format for you here. We've got our prevention costs. Training employees in TQM, training suppliers, and identifying our preferred suppliers. Those will all be all of our prevention costs. Our appraisal costs should be strength testing, savings on inspection of raw materials, internal failure costs were savings on rework and spoilage and then our external failure costs savings on formerly lost profits and savings on warranty costs if we would add all those up we get a net benefit of savings of $55,000. So that looks like something that we would want to go ahead and take advantage of because the benefit of adopting the new program would be $55,000. Now no, it's negative because the savings are denoted by negative signs um, while the costs don't have brackets. So the company should definitely go ahead and adopt the new quality program.